do the so we were gonna do the YouTube live and I apologize. Something came up and we were not able to jump on that YouTube live today, but stay tuned because we plan to do it later this week. Um, and so thank you guys for your understanding. from Without a Crystal Ball. Welcome back to my channel. It's Wednesday, April 12th, 2023. It's going to be a very busy day today and I hope you guys are all enjoying your day. I'm so glad you're all here with me. We're going to talk a little bit about Ginger and Jeremy's marital problems and then finish up this video with a discussion about how a couple Duggar family members are demanding answers from Seagaville Prison on how Josh Duggar got a hold of a phone given his sentence and the stipulations issued by the judge about him not being allowed cell phones and access to the internet. So it's been a pretty busy couple months. Ginger Duggar recently wrote a book and that book has created quite the stir online. She has been able to get a lot of people uh, talking about the Institute and Basic Life Principles and she and Jeremy have gone and done more than she said recently, 53 interviews on this book. She has been for the last several weeks promising that she's going to go live on her YouTube channel and she did her first teaser at the end of March saying that the most important interview that she'll be doing will be taking place on her YouTube channel and she'll be sitting down with her husband Jeremy. A crazy whirlwind of a couple months but I wanted to hop on here and let you guys know that I think my very favorite interview is coming up in just a week or two. We aren't exactly sure when but if you go over and subscribe to our YouTube then you can be notified when we go live because Jeremy is going to sit down with me and interview me about the book. Which means that announcement and today, which is April 12th, they have traveled to Arkansas to see the family and in a photograph that was snapped and shared on Instagram and in a story, uh, Ginger was seen not wearing a wedding ring and then recently she canceled a promised YouTube live stream to her followers and she said something abruptly came up. So now fans are worried that there is trouble in paradise. So let's dive into today's topic. Before we do, can you please do me a favor and give this video a thumbs up? Also subscribe to my channel if you've not yet subscribed by clicking on the subscribe button down below. Do me a huge favor and click on the bell if you would like to get notified of any time I go live and new content loads and leave a comment if you have something to say and share this video with your friends. Ginger Duggar's decision to write a book about the Institute and Basic Life Principle is quite controversial given the fact that she chose to out the harmful practices of the Institute and Basic Life Principles while also uh, uplifting a pastor that has his own history of controversy in protecting bad men and also being terrible to women. So in her book, she says that John, uh, Bill Gothard's teachings are false and that he's not a Bible teacher and she goes into like all the fear of her childhood along with some of the sh uh, scandals and horrible actions that Bill Gothard took against young women then props up John MacArthur and so some people love the book other people that don't like MacArthur are against the book and then other fans are just like glad that she took a very first step when she did her last interview with Ali Beth Stuckey she cried on the podcast and said that she had lost everything days later she was with her family in Arkansas which made people feel like she was potentially lying and today she was supposed to go live on her YouTube channel to talk more about her book. So if you have not seen all 53 interviews, she's going to do another live stream on her YouTube channel. I'm assuming this is a, a means to try to drive traffic to her YouTube channel. Uh, she's probably trying to build the channel up. Uh, I've noticed though that on her channel that videos about this book are not performing very well. There's been a lack of interest from her current core group of subscribers to be remotely interested in any more that she has to say about the book. Uh, when her sisters upload just daily vlogs and life with me type stories, their videos get into the hundreds of thousands of views. One of her recent videos didn't even crack 100,000. I think one for the longest time was sticking at 30,000, which is not a bad number 
But when you think of the magnitude of the fact that she has 100, 1 million people on her Instagram channel, she should be able to convert a pretty high level, at least 10% of that into views on her YouTube channel, meaning she should at least be getting 100,000 views per video, ideally. That's sort of like the standard. They say that like 10% of your audience should always be engaged. That's kind of like a, a measure of the health of a channel. So her channel doesn't have 1.2 million subscribers, but she obviously has a very large Instagram. So she's trying to draw that Instagram audience onto YouTube. And sometimes people follow and sometimes they don't. But she was teasing that she was gonna be doing this on March 31st. And the video said that people could send her questions and they were gonna answer all of these questions. And then yesterday morning, she did another YouTube, or she did a story in her Instagram and she said that, uh, later this afternoon, we're going to be going live. Click on my link, subscribe to my channel, turn on your notifications. I'm going to be answering all of your questions about everything related to the book. And Jeremy and I are going to talk about the book. By the evening, abruptly, she says, oh, just kidding. We can't do this. Uh, the book, the interview isn't going to happen right now. Uh, I'm really sorry about that. Something came up and we're going to do it probably later this week. So, the, so we were going to do the YouTube live and I apologize. Something came up and we were not able to jump on that YouTube live today, but stay tuned because we plan to do it later this week. Um, and so thank you guys for your understanding. This week. So now she's been sort of saying the same thing for the last several weeks. So obviously the rumor mill is going wild on her Insta on Instagram and on Reddit. And people say that because she didn't wear her wedding ring in one photograph while she was visiting her family and holding a baby, and now that she's abruptly canceled this YouTube live stream that she's supposed to be doing with her husband, that means that she and Jeremy are on the verge of divorce. Now, people sometimes accuse me of reaching, and to me, that is such a colossal reach because she was wearing her wedding ring in her, in her video, like in her story that she put on her Instagram today, and last night, she was the one time that she wasn't hold, having her ring on, she was holding a baby. And I don't know if any of you know about babies, but sometimes they like to grab things and sometimes people like to take their rings off because they have delicate skin and they don't want to hurt the baby. They don't want to scratch the baby. So I wouldn't be surprised if she took it off to hold the baby. On top of that, I highly doubt that because she is not going live with her husband to answer a question and answer interview about her book that this would suddenly mean they're going to get a divorce there's absolutely no indication that there's trouble in paradise because he's continuously posting photographs of her on his instagram she uh is constantly praising him and they've been on this whole book tour circuit for two months together so i i don't see it breaking them and even if it did cause stress, and I'm sure the, 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 the challenges that she has faced have added stress to their marriage, it, what, how could it not? They're not gonna get divorced because Jeremy and Ginger don't believe in it. John MacArthur's church doesn't believe in it. And even if she wanted to get a divorce, if she were to go to a counselor at John MacArthur's church, they would counsel her out of it. And even if he cheated on her and he beat her up, they would still stay say that she needs to stay with him uh so honestly i don't see this being true even if he cheated i feel like she would stay with him and jeremy does have a wandering eye but short of jeremy like getting arrested for something i just don't see it happen it's more probable that jeremy had something come up at school he is working as a student pastor at Grace Community Church, which is an unpaid position while he finishes his seminary school. Uh, there also could be some issues with her publisher. They may be trying to table any more interviews at this point. I don't know. Anytime someone talks about a book and they have a publisher and they have agents involved, there's a lot of different moving pieces. And truthfully, it could have just been something from a business standpoint. So I don't believe that there's marital problems between Ginger and Jeremy, though if there were, and they were credible and I thought it was truthful, I would tell you, but this rumor to me doesn't seem worth anything. So Ginger and Jeremy are not on the verge of a divorce in my opinion. Next, over on TikTok, uh, Miss Amy Duggar and her mom Deanna uploaded a video where they were speaking directly to the uh, wardens and the people that work at the federal prison and asking for information about what was on Josh's phone that he was searching. How did he get this phone? Why was he allowed this phone? 
Why wasn't he penalized more significantly? They had a lot of questions. Check it out. Questions to the jail that is holding Josh. The prison. In, well, in prison. Yes. Okay. One, how did he get a cell phone? Yeah. Two. What was he looking at? Ooh, I don't even want to know that. Three, what did he do to get the cell phone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And four, what was the fourth one? Who gave him the cell phone? Yes. Question, question. Okay, Hi. So they have a few questions and I feel like I can actually answer this. Now it's kind of cheeky and funny, but they want to know one, how, how did he get the cell phone? What was he looking at? What did he do to have to get the cell phone? And who gave him the cell phone? So I can answer a few of these questions. I don't know the specifics, but I can say this. Josh Duggar likely got a phone from another inmate who had the phone probably smuggled in by a guard. I have multiple family members that have told me specifically that there is an underground black market mark like network of guards that are corrupt that do cell phones to prisoners. They sell track phones, which are ones that you can buy, which are paid by like you pay for them as you go. You can they retail for like $50. They're a basic Samsung Android. And that is how he got it was from another inmate likely that had it smuggled in from a guard. Now, the next question was, what was he looking at? Because we don't know and they didn't file any charges against him, we'll likely never know what was found on the phone, only that the phone was confiscated when he was found using the phone in his cell and that the phone will be reviewed and forensically looked at by the FBI to make sure that he wasn't downloading or accessing any illegal content. Uh, but at this point, we have no idea what he was looking at. Could he have potentially accessed the dark web or illegal content like he's in jail for in prison for? Sure. Has it been noted by the prison that this is what happened? No, he was disciplined for this. Uh, the, the discipline was that he was to serve 75 days in the shoe, that he have 47 days of good time taken away from him. He does not get to have visitors for six months, no commissary, no phone calls, no emails, any of that. So he lost a ton of privileges for the phone and that's what I know about that. Uh, what They wanted to know what did he have to do for the cell phone. All he had to do was ask another inmate to borrow the phone because apparently Josh borrowed the phone. And uh, the next question was who gave him the phone and apparently my source says that he borrowed the phone from another inmate. Uh, and in, inmates in the prison actually rent out phones for use and then you have to use them. So. The biggest deal for Josh is that because the phone was confiscated by guards, uh, he owes about $2,800 to another inmate whose phone it belonged to and that Josh will have to pay them back that money or risk being harmed physically or having to like work for that guy and do work for him. There's a whole network of like underground hustles that people have in prison. I had no clue. You can just buy about anything. It's really like when I hear about like these offenders that are in there and if they actually get help, like most of them don't, they can still find ways to access content. They most of them are not allowed to have photographs of children, but they will like find ways to Photoshop things or like take a or draw things. It's really disturbing. And then the, the amount of phones that are in Seagaville at any time, one of the loved ones told me that it's, there's usually around 150 to 200 phones in that prison facility at any given time. Meaning there's a lot of people accessing these phones. Now, family members will defend the use of the phones because they say that it's really expensive to talk to their loved ones. Everything is monitored. And just because you're in prison doesn't mean you should lose your rights of communication with your family and friends. Uh, and losing your connection with your family and friends is a huge issue because once they get out, if they lose their support networks, family members say that prisoners have a higher rate of recidivism. I don't know if that's true. Uh, the prison system says that these phones are dangerous to the system because one, they're not monitored. They can plan escapes. They can be used to perform dr like they can use the phones to commit crimes. They can order things to happen. They sell things they're not supposed to, they can look at things they're not supposed to, they can plan things they're not supposed to. So from a prison standpoint, it's a safety concern and it's a flight risk for the inmates to have these. 
So I don't know what the answer is for a better resolution for the inmates to use, but some inmates get to use tablets and get access to email and the internet, but Josh is just not one of them. So his family wants answers, and I frankly don't think that the prison is ever going to tell us what happened, and unless they decide to charge him for this, which it doesn't appear that they will, he's going to get off on like a slap on the wrist for having a phone when he was not supposed to, which makes me concerned about when he does get out that he'll be breaking probation the day he leaves prison. So Amy and Deanna, that's my answer for you. Do you think Ginger and Jeremy are about to get a divorce? Tell me in the comments below. Bye, guys.